So it's very early spring. We're in mid-February, late winter, early spring, and we're in this particular thaw. As you can see, I'm in a t-shirt, which is wacky. It's going to get cold again, but uh, Sasha and I, my wife and I, are out in the garden cleaning up and weeding, but we're also doing some transplanting and some spring propagation work. And what I wanted to do was share notes on a very specific, uh, there's many, many different ways to propagate. We talk about a lot of them, but one that's incredibly easy with the right type of plant is something called tip layering. It's also called, I believe, approach layering, but I know of it as tip layering. And where it works amazingly is with plants like black cap raspberries or blackberries or gooseberries. It is perennial plants, um, shrubby plants or vining plants that tend to have a habit of arching canes that reach back down. And not every single plant will do this, but the ones that do, do it incredibly well. Hold on one moment. We're on a busy road, sorry about that. If you look closely, you'll see that what happened, so this is a black cap raspberry called Ohio's Treasure. It's a named cultivar that I'm interested in getting lots of copies of. Knowing that the habit of this plant is an arching cane form, I know that I can tip layer and so last year, I took all the canes and brought them to the ground and put soil on top of them. That was throughout the summer and into the fall. And over winter, they've rooted to the point. Now, wherever those stems were under soil for a while, they've now rooted thoroughly. And you can see even here where I put soil on top, it arched back up and I put soil again. And you can see what it would do this year if I didn't interrupt. It would arch again and boom. It's almost like a dolphin. <laughs> it's going into the water and splashing and coming back out. It's, I imagine it and fast forward that way. What's beautiful about this is that there's no fancy rooting hormone or heat or any of that kind of stuff. It's simply a, getting the cane to touch the soil for an extended period of time and then testing to see if it's rooted. Once it has, this can now be planted out. This one, which I cut a moment ago, can be planted out. You can leave the cane long if you want, like I have here, but the future is in these growth points. So really, I leave a little bit, almost more as a plant marker than out of necessity. And so the reason I'm propagating these here is we wanna lift them out of this bed and move them into a context that's a little bit more appropriate for them, which is to help bound a hedgerow. So I'm gonna take a moment and just take for now three of them. My preference and my suggestion is to transplant them when they're dormant, at late winter, early spring, or going into late fall, early winter. And so what I'll do is find some soil. When they're well-rooted and dormant, they transplant incredibly easily. In fact, what I'll do is grab my hori, which is a great tool. Instead of using the shovel, I'll just come in and sneak that root mass in, same orientation as it was where it rooted, with the new growth point facing up. Let me get in there. Sure. Yeah. Little plant marker. And one more for good measure. Maybe go a tiny bit slower. Sure. So I'll make a little... Someone hasn't done it before, oh. then it might be helpful too. There's a little being in the ground, we'll move that aside. There it is, settled in, and we make sure, of course, we cover the roots. If you want to be really generous to it, you take an extra moment or two and you loosely apply a little mulch. Good rule of thumb is if you plant things in and you cover them back up in a way where you can't really tell that there was soil disturbance, you've probably planted them well. So I'll go through and these two plants that I planted two years ago now are able to generate 
many, many new plants. If I wanted to facilitate more rooting for this year, I could simply take a growth point. <laughs> All right. No, that's to fine. Get around and here. Pull some soil aside. Now this is particularly nice soil, but it'll work with gen generic garden soil as well. I'll take that, rest it into the soil. That's a lot fancier than I normally do it, but just to show you best practice. You can see even where it's just near the ground, it will wish to root. So seeing that pattern, I could even take it and lay it along the ground and simply drop soil every few inches and new shoots will come up, each of them being rooted. So your black cap raspberries, black cap raspberries, your blackberries, your gooseberries, even things like grapes, which are vines that grow along the ground, shisandra, hardy kiwi, all of these things will root with tip layering. It's a very easy system, so I hope it works for you too. Thanks for watching. Just as a bonus or a side note, here's a black cap. This isn't a named cultivar, this is a seedling that showed up in the bed. And I didn't tip layer it at all. A lot of these plants will just simply do it on their own. I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with this with black caps or blackberries. Even without a tool, if you've got enough mulch, you can simply get under with your fingers. <laughs> That was this last year. To me, that's exquisite. You got wine cap strafaria mushroom running through sawdust with a perfectly rooted plant. Sawdust is a great medium for rooting. Look at how fine and luscious those roots are. And as a wild black cap, I'll use this as a filler in our living wall to help weave and add extra layers. We need to get rid of this because otherwise we'll lose our ability to walk through here this season. The nicer thing to do is actually use a tool and get under it. From there. There is tip layering as nature has designed it. That's nice. Pretty good.